Hey guys, it's Chris. Welcome back to my channel. If you have not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button so you guys know when I upload a video. I am kind of doing another informative video for you guys and just letting you know how I de-stash. I have a couple videos coming up on one was a random act of kindness and then a couple de-stash. Well, one was a de-stash. I have another de-stash coming, I believe, on Friday and then I paid a vendor to for some samples or she had a sampler box and she wasn't doing it but I reached out to her and she said she would throw in what she had so I didn't get a scent choice in that which was fine by me it was 20 bucks so I was like okay cool so I just wanted to do a video on how I personally keep and store my wax and how I de-stash. Now, take into consideration that this was back in 2014, 15, 16, and things were, as I'm finding out by receiving these de-stashes, things were much different, okay? Everybody knew what bags to put stuff in. Everybody knew what cups to put stuff in. And poor dates were hugely important. And so when I de-stash, I would never de-stash a de-stash. Does that make sense? Like, so something that I got in a de-stash, I would not, unless the poor date was on it, on the label, I would never de-stash that because I don't know how old that is, right? So I guess my first point would be, again, and I'm like, I'm when I say don't do this, I'm just, these are just tips and suggestions, okay? Like I know people are going to do what they want. People are going to chuck bags full of old wax or things that don't have any scent or whatever the deal is. And you're going to have some great sellers that everything's perfect and they take meticulous care and everything like that. And then you're going to have other sellers that just chuck stuff in a bag and just don't care about it. So how I would store my wax is anytime I would get something, any piece of wax whatsoever, if the vendor did not have a pour date on it, I would contact that vendor. I, and I'm very OCD, guys. So you're not going to find most people that do this, but I would contact that vendor, ask when this order was poured, and that way I could put dates on it. So they didn't already have the poor date or cure date on it. Cure date is kind of a new thing, which I actually am, am digging with these new vendors. But so you don't have to do the math and, and the stuff like that. So like, I like that. So anytime I would get a piece of wax, if it did not have a poor date on it, I would contact the vendor, find out when it was poured and write it down on the cup or on the bag myself. So that if I did de-stash it, like say I got something and it just wasn't my, you know, a scent that I liked, the person who got it next would have an indication of how old that wax is. I received a, a couple de-stashes. One was from a friend and it was kind of just to see some new vendors and what they're doing with their wax and kind of, you know, kind of thing. So that one is, wasn't as much, you know, it was a random act of kindness. So that one wasn't, you know, important in this context of the video. But the de-stash that I paid for, or de-stashes that I paid for, I got a de-stash that a lot of the wax looked like it was super old, like the labels were falling off, they were yellowed, it just was, and there was no poor dates on them whatsoever. So I would always suggest doing that. Put a date on it so that people know when they get it. And if they don't, if the vendor does not have the poor date, at least they know that I've reached out and contacted the vendor and have some sort of indication when it was poured. Now, is that a like a definite? No, because you're going to have vendors that might sell you old wax that they've had sitting around and tell you that it was poured recently. So, but for me, it's 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 just a it's a better indi indicator. Um, number two, I would never, I'll never de-stash a 
D stash, if that makes sense. Because a lot of the times when you get it, so if I get a D stash, like I got one today and the video will be going up and it's not a positive video, but it wasn't the, the D stasher's fault. I mean, there were some points, but I'm just going to try to make these points here that I think could have been better or should have been known or whatever, but it's a very sweet girl and I'm not going to, she did offer me like, more than half of the wax, I just threw in the garbage. Like, it was useless. It was, it was just, there was zero scent on Cold Snip. There was zero, like, that should never be, that should never be. But I'm not really blaming her. And then I was wondering about the bags because did she rebag it? She didn't. Okay, so that's, that's going to go to another point. So I would never de-stash a de-stash. Only because at that point, you don't know how many people, like, has this, has, was this purchased by the vendor and then just de-stashed because they didn't like the scent? Or was this something they received in a de-stash and didn't like and sent it on to you? Or is this the fourth person that de-stashed this? You, do you understand what I'm saying? If there's no dates on it, you have no idea of knowing you don't know if they've repackaged, and if they've repackaged, are they using the correct bags? Are they using the correct packing material or whatever that they need to use so it, the scent is not sucked out? So you just don't know. So that's something that I would never do. So that's kind of, I think, a, a good rule of thumb. But again, I'm not your real mom, and you can do what you want to do. I just think in order to be known, when I de-stashed my wax, everybody knew it was going to be good. And so, because I would never give something that was subpar. So, like, I don't know if when you melt it, if it was great. Some of the stuff I never even melted because it was just not my scent profile or whatever. So, I don't know when you melt it if it was going to be good. But on cold sniff, it was always good. So uh, that's the other thing. So the materials. So unless you know exactly this type of cello you're supposed to use, do not rebag. I've gotten some de-stashes in the past, not, not this time, but in the past, that, that people have rebagged in Ziploc bags. Literal, I don't, and I don't mean the cello Ziploc bag. I mean like literal Ziploc bags. No. Okay, so in one of these bags, I did receive part of a clamshell or, you know, partial clamshells or whatever that were obviously rebagged. Um, I know that the D-Stash girl said she didn't rebag anything. Those were, you know, how she, the vendor sent them. But the vendor's not going to send you a clamshell, not in a clamshell, you know, in a, in a poly bag, in a cello bag. So, again, it, it's like, Okay, so that's not the truth. That, and that could be the truth that that's how she received it, but she didn't receive it that way from the vendor. If she did, that's a problem. But she didn't receive it that way from the vendor. And I'm not saying she was lying. I'm just saying maybe it was miscommunication, whatever. Um, but, you know, if you get a, a partial clamshell that's not in the clamshell package, beware. Because that person obviously, and I'm not saying all these things are going to, turn out bad. I'm just saying beware because that person obviously rebagged it. And are they knowledgeable? Do they know what they're supposed to rebag it in? It's just really, really important. So I personally would never de-stash a de-stash. I have gotten de-stash wax where I know it's in the wrong bag and I will put them in the correct solo bags myself. But people always knew, like I knew what products to store stuff in. So that was, you know, the case. If you are going to, yeah, just don't, and, and just don't de-stash old wax. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science. I had 25 to 30 Sterilite bins, the three-tiered big Sterilite bins, not the skinny ones, but the big ones, like chock full, literally could not close them full of wax. And even when I did Unless it was like a really, really soft wax, most of my wax did not. Now in transit, it, you know, stuff could happen, whatever. But my stuff did not look, you know, like I, like someone sat on it or whatever the situation is. So I just 
go above and beyond when I do a de-stash. De so when I get enough wax and I start de-stashing, guys, you can rest assured, and anybody who knows me and has gotten de-stashes from me knows that you're not going to get crap wax. You're not, well, I can't say you're not going to get crap wax, meaning you're not going to, when you do a de-stash, you open it, you open up the wax before you send it to somebody. If it is zero cold throw, do not de-stash that wax. That needs to go in the garbage or you need to just melt it yourself and see if it, what you get. But more than likely, that's not. So do not. And I got a lot of that in this de-stash. And like I said, she did refund. Give me a partial. I only asked for a partial refund. She did give me a partial refund. I threw the rest in the garbage because what am I going to do with it? I'm not going to de-stash that to anybody else. If it's not my scent, I would. But I could still smell it and I would. But open up what you are putting in a bag. I know it's a lot of work, but you know, $20, $30, like you might say, oh, I only paid 20 bucks for this. Who really cares? Guess what? I care. I care that you spent $20 because $20 is $20. You could buy some groceries for $20. You could, you know, you could like, you could get a great bag of stuff for $20 as opposed to a subpar bag for $20. I just don't think that's right. So open up what you are de-stashing. If, if you know it's like the only vendor, there's a handful of old school vendors that their stuff five years later, like no lie can still throw. And on cold sniff, it, you think they poured it yesterday. Like it's crazy. Unfortunately, a lot of those vendors are not in business anymore. I'm going to bring up Candles by Victoria again, only because she's one of those people that, those vendors that her wax could be four years old, five years old, and still smell amazing. But I would always still check the scent shot, because I mostly ordered scent shots from her. I would always check and see. And if, and if I felt that it didn't smell like it used to, then I would not de-stash it. It's something that I would melt myself. And nine times out of 10, it threw, still threw amazing. But you can't take that chance when you're sending that to somebody else. So the next thing is, is this is kind of a little more, I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to say just be honest, guys, because I have a severe, deathly severe cat allergy. Okay? And it, there are vendors that I did not, I stopped buying from because they had cats. The cats were, you know, even if the cats were not where they poured their wax per se, they had it on their clothes or whatever. And I've gotten cat hair. When you are packing up a package and you have a cat or a dog and it, somebody specifically states to you, like, do you have a cat or a dog? And you say, oh yeah, but they're you know, an outside cat or they're an outside dog or they're nowhere near my wax. My stuff was always well sealed. And I don't, I mean, I, obviously I don't have a cat. I do have a dog now, but you're never going to find a dog hair. And vendors that have cats or pets or whatever, be really careful because that's one thing that a lot of people used to complain about. It's like, oh, there was cat hair in mine. And, she, and you know, the vendor would say, oh, no, like the, my cat does not go where I pour. No, but you have your clothes on, right? You don't pour naked. You got your clothes on. It sticks to your clothes or, you know, and it flies around, especially cats. Like cat hair just tends to do that. And then it's in someone's wax or it's in someone's bag. So when you are bagging stuff up for somebody, make sure you are somewhere, excuse me, like I will would go into my garage, right? Like I have a dog right now. So if I do a de-stash, I'm going to go into my garage because he doesn't go into my garage. I know there's no cat hair in there or cat hair. He's not a cat. He's a dog. I, I know there's no dog hair in there. And I have a lint roller, you know what I mean? So I'll lint roll myself off and, and just make every opportunity I'll even like wipe stuff down just to make every opportunity that you know before I put it in the bag or box or whatever it is just every opportunity to not just make sure that that does not happen so and that's that's something that's really important guys because 
allergies can be really bad. The last two bags that I un unboxed, the people had cats. And one person I let know, the D stash, I let her know of my allergy. And she said that her cat is an outdoor cat, never comes inside. Yet I went on her Facebook page and there's a picture of her inside holding her cat. So I'm like, okay. Um, and there were cat, there, there was cat hair. And I'm so sensitive that, and I know other people are too, that by the end of the video, I was, my chest was tightening and it was, it was, it's not a good situation. And then at that point, I'm like, do I want to melt any of this? I have to, I put it in the garage. It's just sort of like, I don't, I don't know. Because there was cat hair stuck to the bag, stuck to the labels, everything like that. I don't mind so much human hair because I've had that happen before. And I know when my hair was super long and everything too, and I put labels on stuff or whatever the deal is, if I relabel something because that label is faded or it's, you know, it, it just doesn't look good anymore or whatever. I want everything to look really nice. So I would... You know, even when I'm taping up my box or whatever the situation or my bag and I spot one of my hairs, I would cut it open or whatever and repack it. Because, again, it's just, to me, it's just common courtesy. But I personally don't mind human hair as much. I, I get it. Sh shipping tape is super, you know, sticky and everything like that. So, you know, it just happens. Hair falls off your head. It happens. But be very careful, guys, about allergies. And if people say that, take it really seriously. Don't try just try to make a sale and say, oh, my cat doesn't go anywhere near my wax or whatever the deal is. Just, but all my wax is going to be kept in a, actually, I have a, a special room that I will keep my stuff where the dog doesn't go. But even still, I'll still be very careful when I do, you know, I'm going to take it into the garage, like I said, where the dog doesn't go, everything like that, just because allergies are serious. They're serious, you guys. And and like, so don't say you don't have something. Don't say you don't have a cat or you don't have a dog. It's a pet-free home or whatever. Or even if you're a smoker or anything like that, like don't say you're not or you are, but that's not really fair to the person buying it because they want your D-stash, but they're taking a gamble. So really be honest. So if you're if your animal is in the house, don't just don't sell it just to sell it. Don't you know be be deceiving and say that they're not. And then, you know, because Erin sent me a random act of kindness and I didn't say anything about cats, but when I was opening her bag, my throat started to get itchy and stuff like that. And I was like, and then I was talking to her on the phone and I said, Do you have cats? And she's like, Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. So she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't mention it. I didn't mention it. I just didn't think about it. So I didn't mention it. So that's my bad. You know what I mean? And, it, and again, I didn't pay for it. It was a random act of kindness, but still, you know, you got to be really careful with that kind of stuff. The other thing is kind of, I think my last point is if there's a label on it that is not the vendor's specific label, because I would always, if I had to repackage something because the vendor put it in the wrong packaging, which happens all the time, guys, all the time. So just because you get something and you think that they know what they're doing, they don't always know what they're doing. Do not, what I would do is take that original label off and put it, tape it to the correct cello bag that I was repackaging it in. That not only saves, if you want to keep that wax, it's going to be okay. It's not going to suck the scent out of it. But also if you're de that wax, that person doesn't need to worry about it because it was in, and you know, and you couldn't even write, in all mine, I put little cards and little notes and I would say, hey, listen, I repackaged this because they did not use 5PP. I repackaged this because it was in the wrong type of cello bags. It's, I, you know, it was just poured. You can see the pour date on it. So, you can be confident that this is now, you know, but if it, it looks like that, it looks repackaged is because it was, and this is why. So I'm just always very transparent about that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I just think you got to be honest with people 
because yes, you want them to buy your wax, but I would put my stuff in a, ster in a sterilite bin. Everything was organized by vendor. Everything was, you know, if the cello bag started to get ratty looking, I would repackage it. And so it looked nice because again, I don't know if I'm going to keep that or I'm going to give it to somebody else. And it would just save me time. So when I did de-stash, I could kind of just pick and do because people knew that I was not going to do that. I would, this sounds kind of silly and you guys might think it's going too far, but I would much rather keep on top of something than, than at the time have to deal with it. So I would check on my wax. So for example, if I knew something had been in my bin for a long time, in fact, I would even kind of label, it's kind of crazy. I'm a label maker and I would label it by vendor and then I would label and then I had dividers and I would label each sort of divider like when this went in my bin. I know it's OCD, but it's how it worked for me and it worked out very well when it came to de-stashes because nobody ever complained. Um, and I know this girl said that nobody ever complained. I find that very hard to believe. I mean, maybe I just got a bad, maybe, maybe it was a bad day. Maybe she was just tired. Maybe she just, you know what I mean? Just didn't feel like going the extra. Oh, and don't sell sample wax. Oh, well, it depends. Ask the person. If the person doesn't mind you sending them little samples, then sell them. I, if it's not your scent. I, I don't, a lot of these groups are saying don't sell sample wax. And if you get sample wax, that person's going to scream and moan and complain. This is a transaction between the de-stasher and the de -stashy. And if, so if someone said to me, hey, do you mind if I send some sample things? I would say, well, it just depends on like, how old are they? Oh no, they're new or whatever. Okay, fine. I don't, I don't care. It's wax, right? So I don't care. I mean, I want a sample. Let me sample it and see if I like it, and then I can keep it. Um, and then afterwards, what I would do with de stashes or any wax that I melt, if I had multiples of something, I would, or say candles by Victoria, which you can cut into fours or sun shots, really, honestly, and it throws really good. I would put a lot of my wax, and you're going to see it once I start de stashing, it'll have like an F or it'll say fave on it. Or it'll have a Y, meaning yes, I like it. F for faves was for me to know that I, I want to purchase more of this. Sometimes I would de-stash it because people were asking for certain scents or whatever. And I was like, I can always purchase more. Or I had more. But I always wrote that on the label. So you might say see an F or a Y. And if you see an N, an N doesn't mean it's bad. An N means that's not my scent. Like, I can't do that scent. So that's all that means. I'm trying to think of anything else. Post down below, guys, what you, what is your pet peeves when it comes to these stashes? I mean, I guess one other thing would be price. And so far, like I said, the two D stashes that I got, one was 20 bucks, I think, or maybe I just paid 30 for each of these. Um, I have a candles from the keeping room, de-stash coming. This girl said she, unfortunately, it's going to, I'm probably going to de-stash a lot of this because she didn't tell me the sense. I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. I think I told her that, that I wanted it to be a surprise. I just told her, oh, that's the other thing. Tell people what you cannot melt. Like I can't do cherry. I can't do pine. I can't do melon. I can't do heavy cinnamons, heavy florals. I just can't do those kind of scents. So, let the person who's making you the de-stash know that you just can't do those. Does it take extra time? Sure. Because there are people that will turn around and say, okay, I got, like, I did mystery bags. Well, with a mystery bag, you know that you're not going to know. My wax is going to be great, but all the scents may not be for you. So that's sort of a, but I sold them for 25 bucks a piece, shipped you know, and, and I'll do it again, 25 bucks a piece ship, absolutely total full envelope packed to the rim. So that way, if there's some sense, if there's a few cents in there that you don't like or aren't for you, then 
you, you're still getting a big bag of good wax. Listen to what people are saying. Be very careful about what they can't melt. You know, because a lot of it gives people headaches, whatever the situation is. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. The other thing is, scent shot cups, guys, tape the lids. Tape the lids. I'm sorry. I Or if you have the cello bags, put it in a cello bag. Individually in a cello bag. Because there's nothing worse than opening up a D-stash and... The bag is, or the scent shot is rolling around in it outside the cup, or maybe it's even a scoopable. I know L3 does these little mini scoopables because I got some, and I put my uh, my finger in it because the, the lid had popped off. Just put, put some scotch tape on it. You know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, super glued down there, but, but post down below, guys, what you... What are your pet peeves when it comes to de-stashes? What are your no-nos that you don't want? And I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to de-stashing with you guys and sending out random acts of kindness and everything. But I'm really curious to hear what your pet peeves are that maybe I didn't cover. And so let's just talk about it. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Mwah.